Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name's Ed Hope, a junior doctor in the UK. And last week I asked you what you'd like me to cover. A bunch of you said the last episode to this is gonna hurt, so I'm gonna try and cover off that this week too. But a bunch more of you said, why don't you check out a bit more of our favorite anime of the human body, Cells at Work. So this is episode five of Code Black called Overwork, Hair Loss and Delirium. Overwork and hair loss I can kind of relate to, but actually delirium has a very specific medical definition, so I'm intrigued to see how they cover this. So let's jump in. No one could save this world but you, Killer T-Cells. Helper T-Cells. When notified of invading outside enemies, they serve as commanders who formulate appropriate attack strategies. Nice little shout out to the helper T cells. As they mentioned, they have a key role in coordinating what type of immune response you're gonna get based on really what type of damage and what type of pathogen is causing the damage. I've said this a few times, I think they're really selling themselves short, calling themselves helper, when in fact, they're a bit of a leader. The white blood cells suffered enormously in the Gonococci battle. They go on to say that after the Gonococci infection that the numbers of neutrophils are down because they've been destroyed fighting the infection. And although this is accurate, it's pretty rare for this to cause serious problems. Generally, you think of this happening after a viral infection as the bone marrow has switched to producing other cells that fight the virus instead of the neutrophils. This is what we call a post-infective neutropenia. Neutropenia, the general term of meaning low numbers of neutrophils. The main cause of neutropenia in general is chemotherapy drugs, and this can mean dangerously low levels of neutrophils that mean you can easily become septic of just a small infection. Show them that we T-cells are the most powerful of all! <laughs> Go kill, destroy! So this attitude is getting a little bit autoimmune By declaring war on your own cells, and because we know this episode's about hair loss, I think we're gonna be seeing alopecia areata. I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's see what happens. <laughs> So we're getting used to seeing the inside of the blood vessels in code black with these atherosclerotic plaques that build up in the blood vessel wall and limit blood flow down them. You just leave the other one right over there. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so here we meet for the first time the hair matrix cells and really what we learn about them is they divide pretty damn fast and as an a &E doctor, that's pretty much all I know about them. But this does have some clinical significance as some chemotherapy drugs work by targeting rapidly growing cells, as that's what cancers tend to be. However, they will also disproportionately damage your own cells that are also rapidly growing. For example, your hair matrix cells. So that's why lots of chemotherapy drugs will cause your hair to fall out. The killer T cells have been fighting consecutively for days and are completely exhausted. Perhaps ask for backup? The white blood cells and macrophages could- No! We don't need them! I've said this a few times in Cells at Work, that not only is it a commentary on your immune system and the cells in your body and how they work, but those cells we see are almost showing how healthcare works and some of the problems within healthcare. Here, we're seeing some of the difficult interactions because people are being put under such pressure, which is happening in a lot of healthcare systems. And so some of the staff here are getting burnt out. Exterminate them all! Exterminate them all! Exterminate them all! Exterminate the T-cells seem off today. Oh, everyone's favorite. The platelets know what's up. They're seeing a change in the immune system tending towards an autoimmune process, so your immune cells attacking your own cells. There is pretty good evidence that stress can be one of the triggers for autoimmune diseases, but it's really difficult to study this type of thing and know for sure what's going on. Clearly there is a genetic predisposition, but there are some other theories too, like a virus or a bacteria might prime your immune system, but maybe the stress actually modifies how your immune system responds to those pathogens, and that's why it happens we're not too sure. Adding into that, you can imagine that the symptoms and being diagnosed with an autoimmune disease is also stressful too, so this further compounds the problem. Wait, what's going on in here? What's happening to this hair root? Is it inflamed? <laughs> is it inflamed? It's literally on fire, mate. You'll hear the term inflammation a lot in medicine because it's a kind of general response to damage in the body, but it does have its hallmarks, and we probably all know them from whenever we've injured ourselves, that of pain, swelling, 
redness, heat, and loss of function. So I think the metaphor of being on fire is not a bad one. Substances eliminate. <laughs> I mean, we saw it coming. The killer T-cell doing a bit of friendly fire here. And also, I've not really noticed it before, but I'm liking his little Britney mic. Right, it's worth reminding ourselves how freaking deadly our immune cells are. They are a massive army within your body and they have the weapons designed to break down cells. Now, hopefully that's bacteria and parasites and your own virally infected cells, but they are quite capable of killing healthy cells if they get the wrong messages. What do you mean, why? Isn't it obvious? I'm eliminating foreign matter to protect this body from any outside enemies. <laughs> Very good. I like this. So when he says why he's eliminating foreign material, so this tells us what's going wrong here. So the T cell is incorrectly identifying this as something you should be killing. So all cells display receptors on their surface to communicate with cells around them. One of these receptors is the MHC1 that actually contains proteins that are within that cell. So the cell pulls out proteins that are within it and display it on its surface. So if a virus gets into the cell, there'll be viral proteins that are then put on this MHC1 receptor and displayed on the surface of the cell so that things like the killer T cell can recognize it and realize that something wrong is going on and it needs to be destroyed. However, in this case, there is some other protein, a normal cell protein that the hair matrix cell is displaying that the killer T cell is reading and thinking it's of something it needs to kill. So it's sending the, the signals to kill this cell. And as I said before, there are risk factors for this to happen, but we're not quite sure the process that triggers a T cell to start recognizing your own cells as foreign. And as we're used to as cells at work, this is very accurate. This is alopecia areata as we thought it would be, and this is an autoimmune hair loss condition that is caused by your killer T cells being activated against your hair matrix cells. And you've probably heard of lots of celebrities that have had this before, and that should tell you that it's not super rare. It's around 2% chance of developing it in your lifetime. <laughs> we see the quite striking view of the hairs getting jettisoned out of the follicles, which has a kind of comedic moment here when we see them shoot out, but it goes without saying the psychological impacts of hair loss are not to be underestimated. However, that hair loss comes around. Hair matrix cells, don't give me that crap. What else could a cell that divides at such a blistering pace be but an evil festering cancer cell? But hair matrix cells multiply briskly as well. It appears you may have forgotten that. <laughs> so as is the case, we frequently predict the dialogue in cells at work just from our understanding of medicine and it's happened again. The hair, the hair that we created together, it's all falling out. Alopecia areata. Triggered when the killer T cells, the body's defenses, mistake the hair roots' autoantigens as invasive matter. Couldn't have said it better myself. Scurrying like mice. Is it you? Are you the cancer cell, huh? No, no. Yeah, so I've talked about the killer T cell thinking the hair matrix cell is a viral infected cell, but equally the T cell is also responsible for killing cancer cells as well. We must remove all foreign substances from the body to protect it. Work, work. Helper T cells <laughs> use cytokines to hyperstimulate killer T cells. So yeah, so cyto means cells and kinds means movement or action, kind of like kinetic. So yeah, these chemical messengers prime your immune cells for action. To be fair, the fact that the killer T cells have been activated and caused the hair matrix cells to be on fire, I'd imagine that they've already had their fair shout of cytokines. Eight killer T cells activating a cytokine storm. It's cytokine storm, I mean, it does exist, but in this context, not so much. This is a thing, but to my knowledge, not associated with alopecia areata. You can get it from autoimmune diseases, but also you can get it from infections, most notably the life-threatening complications of COVID-19, where after a week or so of the virus, your immune system goes into overdrive, producing lots of these cytokines and causing lots of inflammation in the lungs, causing acute respiratory distress syndrome or 
ARDS. And it's worth noting that COVID itself has been reported to trigger alopecia in some people. When I tried to make a run for it, a whole bunch came rolling after me. <laughs> so they've arrived and we recognize these guys from the first season of Cells at Work. In the Hay Fever episode, these are steroids. Get down! We found a data match. They're steroids. If that's true, then we're screwed. <laughs> so yeah, we end up finding out that these are in fact steroids. And this makes sense as this is one of the possible treatments of alopecia areata, although it is important when we examine the patient for the first time to make sure there's not new evidence of hair growth, because then in which case we just watch and wait. But yeah, if there is no hair growth and more than 50% hair loss, then we would try a topical steroid cream. As we know, steroids are anti-inflammatory and dampen down our immune response. And so also relates back to why we use steroids for anyone in hospital with COVID-19. So we had evidence that dexamethasone helps these patients and that's because there's likely a cytokine storm or significant inflammatory process going on in the lungs that needs to be controlled. And we end with a bit of a teaser for the next episode. So seeing some hematuria, so blood in the urine. So you've got to think if it's painful, it could be an infection or stones. And if it's painless, you'd worry about cancer or kidney problems. I guess we'll find out in the next episode. So there you have it, another brilliant episode of Cells at Work. I certainly refreshed a lot of stuff from it. I haven't seen alopecia for a long time in the emergency department, but as we know, it's pretty common and has a huge effect on people's lives. I thought the episode being called Overwork, Hair Loss and Delirium is a bit misleading. As we said at the top of the show, delirium is a very specific medical definition. That's when you have an acute medical problem and it's causing you to be confused, which I, the, I wouldn't expect the patient to get confusion off the back of alopecia. So yeah, I give it minus one point for that. Everything else, top marks. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel and leave me a comment if there's anything I've missed. I like to read them and I know a bunch of you like to know more about this anime too. And also leave me a comment if there's any other things you want me to cover. I'm always up for exploring new ideas. So on that note, thank you again for all your continued support. I hope you're all well and I'll be back soon.